Welcome back to HFR. This week we're reviewing the XM Studios Brown Suit Wolverine. Last week was the unboxing video, which you can see here. Our reviews may not come out first, or second, or third, but I'll get there eventually. They call us half ass for a reason. <laughs> So if you enjoy the content of HFR, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you get notices whenever I release a new video. First category up is concept. My definition of concept is the artist's vision. What did he originally go to the drawing board with? Or his computer or whatever? What, what was he thinking? One of the things I love about this is that it's unique. It's not Wolverine on a sentinel hand. It's not Wolverine in the danger room. It's not Wolverine in the woods. I like the Japanese uh, theme. So the artist concept here is a tip of the cap to the 1982 Miller four book miniseries that originally tied Wolverine to Japan. The artist did his homework on the base. The gray tiles have been discussed on forums and Facebook posts. But uh, actually, it's very accurate to a lot of uh, photos that you see of uh, ancient um, Japanese architecture. The tiles are called Kawarda tiles, Kawarda, and they're a clay tile, hence where the gray color comes from. There were other colors, but it's very common for you to see the uh, gray color. And so what the Japanese architects did is they would embellish with the... Um, gold embossment that you see here, the various designs in the architecture, and then they would do sculpts such as the fish there to dress up the drabness of the gray clay tiles. The Japanese fish sculpture is called a dragon fish. It's pronounced Sochiuku. is I think my best stab at it. Sochiuku. And it translates literally into tiger fish. The tiger fish had uh, supernatural powers to protect the home or the, the castle or whatever from fire as it was controlling the blessings of rain. So in summary of the artist's concept, I think he hit a home run here. While it's not over the top, it's not perfect. I just like the fact that it's unique. I like the way they laid it out. I love the fact that he gave multiple options with the various three sets of arms, two head sculpts, metal adamantium claws, bone claws, gives you just basically endless amount of possibilities of how to display this. Overall, concept is getting a score of nine from me. While not perfect, it is excellent and I thought it was very well thought out. Next up, we have construction. And what I mean by the construction is, is how well did the factory do at producing the artist's vision? Did they execute it well? I think they did. The uh, joints in it are very solid. Uh, whenever you assemble, everything keys in very nicely, very snugly. There's a few nitpicks, but uh, overall it's just very well, very straightforward to put on. Do have a criticism of the little small dashes, nicks in the uh, clay tiles where the katanas go in. They're too small. They're too tight. Uh, you have to kind of wedge the katana into it whenever you're doing it. The, the bottom one seems to fit okay, but the top one's not really well done. If you just, you can't get it to stand up straight, it wants to fall. You can eventually get it to wedge in to where it'll stand up, but I already have. Do it really half-assed. That's the American way. The handle fell off, so strike. <laughs> one of the handles on the sword. That's actually one of my notes is that uh, one of the handle uh, does come off fairly easily. The other one's nice and snug, but this one is not. So there you go. Live demo. Do you have some paint scratching? 
on here. I'll try to display a picture of it closer there. It appears to be metal underneath it. I'm almost tempted to sand off the uh, paint that they put over the metal and uh, see what it looks like, but no turning back if I did that. One of the other construction issues that people have discussed on forums and Facebook is the fact that the claws are plastic, not metal. And it's actually very logical and it's a plus, it's not a minus. So, I happen to be a plumber by trade and one of the things that we know in plumbing is that whenever you do fittings, whenever you connect fittings, you do not put plastic on the exterior of a metal fitting because the metal does not give, but the plastic will. So you can put, I don't want to demonstrate. <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs> so if you have a female fitting and then the male fitting, you want the female fitting to be metal, not plastic. Why? Because plastic will yield, it will give and break to the metal. So that's the thought process here. So if they make these claws socket in, then guess what happens if you drop metal, boom, here, this side of this breaks out because it's the weaker of the two things. I would much rather have an accident and have this claw break off in the socket than to have the statue break. So. Major thumbs up. I didn't quite get it. I was disappointed in it, but once I thought about it logically, winner. The design here was so close to getting a 10 construction rating, but two things dinged it, both to do with the katanas. The holes that they insert into don't fit properly. They're too snug. They scratch the swords, and the handle falls off on the one. Fell just short of a 10, giving it a score of nine. Next up we have paint. And I'm going to divide the paint score into two subcategories. I'm going to talk about the paint on the base, and then I'm going to talk about the paint on the character. And then I'm gonna average those two scores. So it's possible in the future, you may get an eight and a 10, and then up at, wait, that's a nine. I'm not a smart man. What I was trying to say there was that it's possible that you could end up with a 9 on the base and a 10 for the figure, and that would give you an average of 9.5. Gray isn't necessarily the most exciting color ever, but it's very well done, uh, even in the texture of it. You know, you have a darker gray, you have a lighter gray in there, you have some browns on some of the shingles. Um, just very well done to not be just one flat, monotonous uh, tone like you see in some paint jobs. And then, of course, they accurate to Japanese uh, architecture and the way that they did. They have these little symbols that they painted with a gold embossment there that uh, give a little bit of pizzazz. And, of course, you have the weathering on the helmet makes it look like it's a piece of armor that's been used in battle. Not a big fan of the dull that they used on the blades. I prefer to see those shinier, maybe not as shiny as uh, his claws, but uh, the handle is excellently done. Uh, the uh, subtle shading and details of the uh, katana handle is excellent. The paint on the dragonfish is so well done as it's a bronze statue. The uh, patinaed green uh, as bronze is out in the weather it gets this oxidation patina to it that turns it this pukey green color actually and what's cool is they very accurately replicated this and the fact that uh, in the raised highlights where any weathering or uh, someone brushing against it or just the elements or whatever wears that patina off and you see the gold highlights to it. So just major thumbs up on the paint job of the uh, dragonfish. Love it. So very tempted to give the paint job on the base a 10, but if I have any reservations or if I have anything I say, well, I would have done that differently. I would have done this a little better. It can't get a 10. 10 is, I can't add to it.
perfection, it, you know, as much as a statue can be perfect. So, again, the dullness of the blades, the fact that it scratches the paint, etc. I got to give the base a nine. Moving on to the character paint, I think it is just very, very well done. It's one of the best uh, paint jobs in my collection. The uh, subtle shading in the yellows is my favorite. Uh, the way that they outline the musculature without seeing the spray. You actually have to get it under the right lighting to see um, the fact that they've used the shadowing in there, but it really accentuates his muscles and uh, very, very cool. All of the paint on the leather, the black leather, the paint on his face is uh, phenomenal. Uh, the uh, mouth, uh, the teeth and all that uh, have a gloss on it to where they appear to uh, be shiny. The tongue uh, coloration is just perfect. Uh, five o'clock shadow on him is excellent. It's kind of what I like to see. He's darker just in the chin area to where it doesn't look like he has you know, like a soot on his face and uh, coloring in the belt, the weathering in the belt, how they did a black wash in there is excellent. I like the color of the belt also. It's an accent without being uh, overly bright. Um, interesting choice to do the uh, coppery bronze zippers on the back there. Almost you would think that they would have gone with the silver, but uh, I like them. It's unique. Um, I like things that are different. Uh, the boots look fantastic. Paint job on those has sh subtle uh, black shading in the brown. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. 10 on the paint job, except I have a few flaws. Right here on the knee, there is a smudge mark that I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if the sculpt underneath is showing through or what. Uh, there's another one in another area on the back of the leg. They're small, they're half the size of your pinky nail, but they're there. One other criticism I have of the paint is the hair on the arms. They kind of did like a sooty looking wash over everything instead of if they had taken a dry brush, which is when you take paint, you'd get most of it off and then you hit the highlights. The raised parts take the paint, the rest does not. I don't, can't think of any logical reason for them not to have done that and gone with the option that they do. So in summary, the character paint is phenomenal. I love it, I love it, I love it. But can't give it a 10. As much as I wanted to, hair on the arms, negative, and three small blemishes on the pants, basically. Character paint. The figure is phenomenally painted. I hate to give it a nine, you know, less than perfection because it is outstanding paintwork. It's just there's a few small flaws that keep it from a perfect score. So between the paint on the base and the paint on the figure, the average score overall paint is a nine. Sculpt score will be much like paint, and then I'll divide it into two subcategories, the base and the character. So moving on next to the base sculpt, I give a 10 score on something when I say there's nothing I would do better, there's nothing I could improve on that, any suggestion, and that's the case here. I'm gonna give the base a score of 10, because I don't have anything to add to it. I only have good things to say to it. I think the fish is phenomenally sculpted. The tiles look excellent. The choices to have them look like a dilapidated building, like or, or it's crumbling currently. Um, the things are broken up. Um, just total winner in all ways. I think the uh, artist uh, did his research and the uh, final sculpt portrayed what he envisioned. Score of 10. Moving on to character sculpt. Again, absolute total winner. There's nothing that uh, I could add to it. There's nothing I could say, man, I would have done that differently. 
just everything is absolutely phenomenal. The uh, unmasked Ted sculpt is good. I like it. Um, I would rate it very strong. Maybe an 8 out of 10 for the uh, unmasked Ted sculpt, but the mask is a 10 out of 10. To me, it's perfect. It portrays Wolverine's aggression, his rage, uh, just perfect expression. It fits all the various uh, arm switch outs. Uh, just total winner there. There's nothing I could add to it. The way they sculpted the boots, the pants, the subtle uh, texturing in the lines uh, that you'll see on the photos as I zoom in. They... Everything about this Wolverine sculpt says, I'm dangerous. Don't mess with me, bub. There's nothing about it that I would change. So, in saying that, the character sculpt also gets a 10. Averaging the base sculpt, of course, at a 10, and the character sculpt of a 10 gives... 10! Ah, ah, ah. Oh, a 10. Overall sculpt, 10. I think it's a perfect statue as far as a sculpt. The last category is presence. And by that I mean shelf presence, which is the wow factor. How much do I enjoy looking at the statue when it's months old? If I walk in, are my eyes drawn to it? If a visitor comes in, is it one of the first ones that they go, oh cool, look at that. The yellow color, love the brown and yellow. Hands down my favorite Wolverine suit. Uh, I like the blue and yellow okay, but uh, not a comparison. I love the brown and yellow. The Japanese uh, motif of it uh, is just eye-catching, different. It's unique in, amongst the collection. Uh, just everything about it pops, colors pop, sculpt pops, phenomenally executed. Wow factor, 10, baby. So at the end of each review, we will have the collective score. Get it? Collective. Get it. The collective score is a tally of all the other categories. <laughs> he said tally. The possibility to have a total of 50. 50 would be a perfect statue. You know, you could have a couple of minor nitpicks, but it's basically a flawless statue. For Brown Suit Wolverine, the collective score is... Forty-seven out of possible fifty. Love this piece in summary. Hope you enjoyed the review video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe button. Don't make me beg now. Hit the notification bell so you get uh, notified whenever I release the next video three months from now. But um, hope you enjoyed the vid. Take care.